with that said, <laughs> I like to say I am Abana, the recovering African who is enslaved in America, Kaka, and who is a representative from the voices in the margins. I am also true to the cause of African liberation via unification and utilizing the tools of healthy and effective communications. I am a traumatized traumatologist, the traumatized traumatologist. I am a trauma queen and I am the queen of trauma. They <laughs> talk about a drama queen and what I realize is what, does, what is drama? Except for a, a story. What is a drama but a very deep, intense story of something usually that's very terrible that happened. It just keeps a grip. Oh my God, what's going to happen next? Oh, that's a drama. What's going to happen? What's happening? What happened? Who did it? Why'd they do it? How'd they do it? That's not a drama. So we talk about quote unquote drama queens and they have labeled women of African descent as drama queens. Mm -hmm. Well, in some ways that's appropriate because we are Mama Africa. We are deep, mm -hmm. deeply rooted, and we have a story to tell in terms of what has happened to us. I had music, but for whatever reasons, the music player won't work this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I started us off with a, with a song that would also put us in, the, put uh, my sharing in context, if you will, in terms of just how deep this stuff goes for us. Because it, it was a song by Maccabee, and it's about the effects of slavery. Some people not going to like what I say, but I have to say it in a way. I have to say it anyway. We're going to talk about slavery and the effects of it today. Some people just don't want to know about 400 years ago. But the thing about slavery is it's affecting people now. That was the, the tune <laughs> that I wanted to open up with. Um, so with that, I'm going to kind of go forward. Let me move this a little closer to me. And um, I'll say, I am a... Oh, I'm sorry. I am a child of... I am a child of the 60s. I left the spirit realm. January 19, 1960. It was a Tuesday. And at 6.18 a.m., I left that spirit universal realm, and I came down here into this individual body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 618, the birth story as it goes and as it was told to me, I almost killed my mother in childbirth. I'm, I'm the middle child, I'm number three of five of my parents' children, and the story has always gone that I almost killed my mother. Mm -hmm. Um, in the birthing process. Why? Because I was coming out the womb. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to come. He said, I just kept turning and get me in position. I, and I imagine I looked up there and saw that. I'm not going out there. No, 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 no. I changed my mind. I want to come back. I don't want to do it. Nope, I'm not coming out. And she lost a lot of blood as a result. And they did what they did. Back then, there were two doctors. The one sat on one, put me my head in position. The other one sat on her stomach and pushed her, forced me out here. And I came out screaming and hollering, and the doctor said, we have a live one here. <laughs> and I think I have been live ever since. <laughs> um, and so that was the story of my coming forth. I've always been as a child, as I know myself, and, and remember the stories told to me, that I've always been sort of deep. I remember, you know, around about seven or eight, telling my, my siblings, it was probably around Halloween, and I had this ideal about this thing we could do to have fun. But what it, it's like, you know what? The mommy's mother, and then her mother was her. It's like I, my mind at seven or eight, I could just see the connections between the maternal lines. It's like, well, my mother had a mother, and then her mother mother and her because it, it just showed how everybody was connected <coughs> to a one mother. Mm -hmm. There had to be an original mother mm -hmm. that everybody sort of came to. That was like seven or eight. Seven, eight. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of was trying to explain this to my siblings and of course they're like, mm -hmm. she's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, but no, can't you say that? 
Mommy and her mother, and her mother was her mother. But the mother, it had to be traced back to an original mother, is all I was thinking. <laughs> and I found out, I think that that's true. Now, the scientists have said that all human life and existence mm -hmm. traces back to one that's right. black woman. That's right. Okay. Absolutely. And now they have the bones and proof and all of that. Mm. At any rate, um, I was always a very quick study, I was always very inquisitive. Um, I love to smile, but I'm slow to warm up, and I tend to be watchful. But then once I feel somewhat safe, and and you had, and I have extended my trust to you, then I'm very open, very loving, very giving, and very full of life. Um, that's always been my personal my personal side. That's the spirit that came to this world on January 19, 1960. Right? Um, I've always been pretty matter of fact, straightforward, and focused. It's that probably that seer and that truth sayer dynamic. I've always been a reader and I've always kind of observed and watched things and watched people. I'm going to tell you about my family uh, story because it's like, okay, so I came from spirit realm and now I'm in this individual body. And in part, I guess the way I think about it is Dr. Sabbath talked about that by body, mind, uh, spirit. and spirit. And the way she puts it, the way I kind of see it is like spirit is what comes in and connects these two. Because without spirit, body can't do nothing and ain't no mind doing nothing. Once the spirit is gone, everything is a done deal. Mm -hmm. But this spirit is what comes in and gives life, animation. And as I know it, this spirit is emotion or energy in motion, movement. And it provides the movement and it allows our bodies to move and it allows our minds to turn on. It's like without spirit, that energy that gets in motion, that energy that left spirit realm, without it, the body and mind is what? Dead. Um, so that's the spirit that I came, free, ready to give and ready to love. Um, my family story from the age of zero to 20, because that's the time you are learning, you grow up, right? Again, you're attached to an umbilical cord, you're born right into a family, you have no choice about it. <laughs> None whatsoever. These people, that mother, and all the people that she connected to before you got here, now becomes part of you. My family story from zero to 20 was, uh, I say, I would say fraught with parental separation at the age of four. So my place in my mother as a single parent in 1964. And remember, keep in mind, I'm talking about the 60s right now. Um, single parent with five children, and, and I was four when that happened. Family alcoholism, physical discipline was the norm. You did something wrong, get a switch, did a belt, the shoe, whatever they can get their hands on, physical discipline was the norm. Um, emotional abuse, partly in terms of the alcoholism, will lead to emotional abuse because we won't know how to meet uh, the emotional needs of children when we are sort of caught up in an, in an addiction or alcoholism. I could get into that a little bit more later. Um, my mom did have a, a brief incarceration, so I experienced incarceration of a parent. It's in that first 20 years of growing up. Um, suicide attempts I witnessed of my parents attempting suicide. Um, <coughs> domestic violence with her intimate partners and family members. I come from a family of women. And they were all of the f my family members on my maternal and paternal side used alcohol to manage the pain. What I know today, and I'll just mm -hmm. say it like this now, they use alcohol to manage the pain of their reality of living in a racist system and a racist society. Because, in, in fact, addiction um, is about pain management. Addiction is a disease of mm -hmm. feelings. Mm -hmm. And it is our soul's way of um, managing the inconsistent, hypocritical messages that we receive that are very painful. I love you. Bam. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, okay, what part did I? Miss? <laughs> <laughs> you 
Right. Love me, why are you beating the crap out of me? Like right. this. Your mind is trying to make sense, and it don't make no sense at all. And it's painful. And in order to numb that pain, whenever we get a hit, a big hit, they take you to the hospital, what is the first thing they're going to do? Medicate. Medicate. Pain. Pain management. <coughs> That's all addictive. Addiction and addiction addictive behaviors are about. It's pain management. Pain and simple. Um, and so all of the women and the men in my family did this. So of course, you know, when they got to partying on Friday, Saturday night, they got drinking, defense mechanisms go down, alcohol, they always said, was what? The truth serum. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna tell you this stuff that I didn't tell you. <laughs> I couldn't tell you when I was so because you know we had this mandated. You don't have something nice to say. Don't say nothing nice. Now I'm drunk. I don't give a flying. That's how I went. That's how I went in the hood. I don't know if it was like for some of you all who grew up during that time period. But that's what it was like for me in my in my life and my family growing up. So all the women, so domestic violence, the sisters beating up everybody. I never forget that scene. Seeing my aunt was eight months, my aunt about mm -hmm. eight to nine months pregnant. Bessie was short, probably Miss Hattie size. Okay. <laughs> okay. And the sisters got to fighting and drinking in one night and in the bedroom. And one of the sisters took Bessie and bam, punched Bessie right in the bed. Bessie did a flip, belly and all, <coughs> oh, over the bed. I'll never forget that. Never forget that day in my grandmother's house. Flipped over. The baby was fine. It was uh, she was pregnant with Tanya, I think it was. Baby came out fine, and you know. But those were some of the experiences yeah. that were the norm mm -hmm. in my house on the weekends when people drank and parties. This is what happened. The cops came, and yeah. you know, people got hurt, and you kept it moving. Mm -hmm. um, emotional, physical neglect is part of you know addictions, and then my father and his emotional neglect and abuse in those first 20 years because after they separated my father was one of those men who would I'm coming to get you next week my mother would have us dressed and ready mm -hmm. and we waited okay. and waited and waited mm -hmm. and he didn't come okay. and we'd hear from him maybe a month or two later drunk I'm coming to get you I know I know that yeah okay but so no and neglect emotional neglect is what it was Plain and simple. So that's what I experienced in my family life. That's what I grew up through. And as I moved, some of the communal experiences that I was having during that time period, and I'm talking zero to 20. And as I talk about communal and societal, I'm going to sort of break it down to the 60s and then the 70s. So what was going on for me between zero and 10, which was the period of 60s, and then in the 70s, from 70 to 80. Now, because then you're moving into other stages of development, of course, during that time also. Mm -hmm. Communal.